Before I became a qualified architect, I actually used to own my own drone company. If that doesn't make me qualified to make this video today, I don't know what does. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomic, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about drones and drones for architects. Which one is the best for you and your business? Now, I used to own a lot of drones. There used to be a couple just sitting in my cupboard collecting dust. Others would get flown daily. I've tried almost every single one on the market from a friend, from a supplier, or either by purchasing it myself. So when it comes down to these recommendations, I know what I'm talking about. Personally speaking, DJI makes the absolute best drones to fly from a consumer and professional level. The drones are just so easy to fly, so I'm gonna stick to the DJI category. Now I'm gonna start with the most expensive and best drone, the DJI Phantom 4. Now this isn't my recommendation for a very simple reason, which I'll get to in a minute. The DJI Phantom 4 is a phenomenal drone. It weighs about 1.4 kilos with all the batteries in and gives you about 30 minutes of flight time. 30 minutes is pretty good as an architect because we aren't going out flying for kilometers and kilometers and trying to get those beautiful cinematic shots. Most of the time, we're just trying to get those final details of the house, trying to get some good photos for social media, or potentially you might be using that drone as an inspection tool. So most of the time, we don't need it to last forever. 30 minutes is absolutely fine. It operates in the zero to 40 degree category. So in Australia, that's absolutely fine, except in summer, we do exceed 40 degrees every so often. Having said that, 40 degrees one or two days in a year isn't too bad, so this drone operates absolutely fine. The camera is phenomenal, of course, with a cinematic one inch sensor on it. It gives you full cinematic quality files so you can edit and color grade however you need to and it gives you crystal clear photos. Now the reason I'm not recommending the DJI Phantom 4 and I'm not recommending the next one either, you're going to have to stick around to the end to find out what my recommendation is, is for the simple fact most countries around the world including Australia have a law that states any drone over 250 grams must be flown by a registered drone pilot. In Australia, that means you have to go to your local airport and do a drone pilot's license test and exam. That runs for a couple days. It costs a couple thousand dollars as a commercial license. Now, if you're running this as your average consumer, you're more than welcome to purchase any of these drones. But going back to the new laws, as architects, if you're flying it in your business or for your business, then you are flying it commercially, which means you need a commercial remote pilot license and basically you need to know everything about air traffic safety. It is a very intensive course and it isn't something to be taken lightheartedly. Now, if you aren't flying this under a commercial license and you are using it as your average consumer and just the general public, not under your architect's brand, but probably still gonna use it as an architectural drone, well then you're probably best looking at the Mavic Air 2. Now I've selected the Mavic Air 2 over the Mavic Pro 2 because it's very simple at the end of the day. The Mavic Air is a simple, small package that is perfect for all levels of production. It doesn't matter if you're starting out as an architect or if you have a fully fledged multinational business because the Mavic Air 2's quality is phenomenal in that size package. You can go almost anywhere with that drone in your pocket or just in your hand, no questions asked, it is Phenomenal. The Mavic Pro 2 is a step above the Mavic Air 2, but in my personal opinion, as an all-around drone, I do believe the Air 2 is just a much better product in a much smaller form factor. If you are looking for those cinematic quality files that you can color grade with commercial grade color grades, then you're gonna have to move to the Mavic Pro 2, not the Mavic Air 2, for the simple fact that it has better color grading software and image files at the end of the day versus the air. Nonetheless, both of these drones come in way over that 250 gram category. The Mavic Air 2 is about 570 grams, whilst the Mavic Pro 2 is almost a kilo. I think it's 970 grams off the top of my head. So both drones are well over the maximum allowed weight limit for a commercial product without a commercial license. This brings us to DJI's newest drone, produced for this law and for this law only. It comes in at 249 grams, one gram under the legal limit. It is the Mavic Mini 2. Now, the Mavic Mini 2 is a very cute little adorable drone. 
and it isn't exactly the best thing that you can take on site because it's this tiny little loud drone that's just gonna annoy everybody. But having said that, it still produces phenomenal pictures and videos at the end of the day, especially if you know what you're doing in Lightroom and Premiere Pro, that you can get away with this drone being your only drone in the office and still being able to produce incredible footage. It has a flight time of 31 minutes again, even in that small compact package. So still you have the ability to do absolutely everything that you could with the most expensive Phantom 4. It has the same ability to run anywhere from zero to 40 degrees. So unless you're flying in the snow and trying to operate it under conditions that aren't exactly favorable, which would be relatively nice photos, it isn't recommended. Now, I say this because I have flown a Mavic 2 Air in the freezing, freezing cold. It was about minus 10 and it worked absolutely fine. It did come up with a warning and it just said, be careful, be cautious, but I didn't see any issues. Again, I took this risk. It's completely up to you if you wanna take this risk in that climate. If you're planning on taking really far away photos and zooming in and cropping in later, this isn't the drone for you. But obviously as architects, again, we're filming most of the time just our project, just our finished product. So it's that one house, we're relatively close, we have a very controlled environment. The only elements that are against us is mother nature. But obviously just make sure you pick a nice good day to go out and fly a drone. It doesn't matter what drone you select, the laws are basically the same. Pick a clear day, don't go in the rain, don't go in the dark. Anyway, that's all for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And because it is February and we're doing 28 videos in 28 days, it would usually be, I'll see you next Monday, but because it is February, I'll see you tomorrow.